Tuesday, except it's really Wednesday. <laughs> but this is Trekland HQ. Uh, Plushy McCoy is back there. Uh, and looks like we're live. Farewell, Annie. And hello, Star Trek RPG shows. A very historic episode 293 today of, yeah, Trekland Tuesdays Live with me, Dr. Trek Larry Nemechek, coming at you right here from the heart of Trekland through Portal 47 for some sanity, for some clarity, and the big picture in all things Star Trek. And I say all oh, that's kind of omnipotent. I know, I know. I mean, enough, <laughs> enough and newer. And hey, I think we're live. It looks like we should be. I think we are. And I can't wait for everybody to bop in. Now, it is Thursday. I know. Don't be upset. We had some studio issues yesterday here in advance. I knew about. So we made the bump to Thursday. So I'm hoping everybody was able to come along with us. And I hope especially you're able to be with us today. If you're watching this later, it won't make any difference. If you're seeing this on YouTube later, uh, it's still a great show. But being live is being here with a special because today, as I've been threatening for a few months now, we are going to have a guest, a guest on TTL. And not only just the way it went down, not only one guest, but two on two completely different topics. I know it's like Fred Allen and Allen's Alley. Google it. Um, no, so glad you're here with us today. And hey, if you are new to Trekland Tuesdays Live, boy, did you figure out a great week, I should say, not a Tuesday. But we'll be back on Tuesday regular. This is not a permanent change. What's the permanent change is now we may, from time to time, have guests. Don't know. It'll be whatever the week brings. Just so happened today, I wound up with two great guests because of unfolding events. Going to get to that in a second, but I want to welcome everybody. If you haven't yet, jump into the chat. Say hello to everyone. I know. Get out your Wednesday clothes. <laughs> get out your Wednesday face. But we'll be back on Tuesdays for sure next week uh, at our regular time. And let us know where you're from if you are new. I see more and more and more YouTube folk in, which is awesome. Um, but we're on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, you will see us. You'll see all the comments. Same thing as on Twitch. If you're on Facebook, then not so much. Only the Facebook comments. But that is great. I'm keeping an eye here because, look, at the risk of embracing too much this week, and by the way, for those of you watching live, we'll have both guests will be our topics today, and then I will still take a short break. We'll look at the Parrot Analytics really quickly here with, what, barely two weeks counting down to the Picard premiere. And then we will get full bore into your chat. So hang on. If you're not used to this, I will circle back and get back into your chat a little later after a short break. After today, not one but two guests. Um, and here's the deal. I talked to you last week about this kind of quiet revolution. I know it's not new to a lot of people. And it was new to me is the fact that I finally dived in and got the details. But especially when I know folks who are doing this, they're kind of pioneering, like so much has been happening lately, pioneering a whole new realm, not just in Trek. It's been going on outside our franchise, obviously. But within the Trek franchise, we've got pioneers doing it. I'm talking about the live action role play um, in this series, Clear Skies, right now, but also what's been the last year or two. And yeah, the pandemic accelerated that as it did with all things, um, all things virtual. People not only got used to producing it, but the great unwashed audience finally got used to what it's like. When I, I was brought back to this, our Portal 47 guest this week is the Oscar Emmy winning Mike Westmore, who I had as an open house guest in 2018. And I went back and looked at the video and I remembered that it was two years before the pandemic and Mike was a little off about this whole on web camera thing. So we did it by phone with a slideshow from start to stop. So that was like, oh, and that was just 2018. That's how much the world has changed and how much the virtual companies have geared up and how much everybody has figured out how to make their experience, whether it's church or school or work or our fandom, uh, a virtual experience, um, as I predicted in 2020, a couple of weeks for the lockdowns. But um, thank God, thank goodness for that. Um, 
but what that reminded me of is just how fast this is all revolutionized. And today, uh, Aliza Pearl is going to be with us and talk about, uh, I talked about last week, uh, they're coming up next week. Uh, they're, spon they're in affiliation with uh, Medifius, who has Star Trek Adventures, the official licensed roleplay game, which is awesome. They're even doing it in some cooperation with Star Trek Online, which you would think they would be massive competitors. But they're all good. They're all good. And also, so she's coming up. She'll be with us just in a few minutes. But first up, and I hope everything's going well, um, I'm looking for our first guest who is going to, in a small way, but in a very personal way, talk about the loss we had uh, last weekend. And it's Wednesday now. It's starting to fade a little bit. But I think what was so poignant about Annie Wershing's passing, and well, first of all, she was only 45. She had three young sons and a husband, very busy actress. We know her now from um, from the Borg Queen of season two of Picard, although she had had a guest, a guest role on an episode of Enterprise called Oasis that also, you know, the big spotlight was, oh, look, it's Renee Abershawal in the guest cast. And she was too. As a young actress, in fact, I read that it was her first TV role. So there you go. Star Trek had her in her destiny. Um, and uh, I'm I'm doing it again. Like I said, we're we're in a new system here now, so I'm going to vamp just a little bit before I see. But I think what what touched so many about Annie, and I I want to talk about this anyway. I never had a chance to meet her or interview her. Uh, she got out to Mission Chicago in April. She was at Vegas in August. Um, she died of cancer Sunday. But the thing is, as her husband shared on a GoFundMe page, they were raising money just for transition for the boys and, and him. Uh, a friend started it. She'd been acting for ages. So many other series, and yes, even franchises, um, had had a piece of her claimed her as their own. I mean, I've just, you go to IMDb and the things that she is known for, the top four, uh, 24, first of all, and Runaways, and then Revolution, and then The Last of Us. And a lot of those fandoms had uh, had claimed her. We were kind of the last, uh, not the la the latest, late great, but she was a hard worker, worked all the time, if you look at her credits, and, um, and a Apparently, to everyone who worked with her on the Picard orbit that we know, just talked about what a what a great actress, but what a hard worker, what a wonderful person and fun. And I stumbled onto something that I shared, a little makeup video where they're, she's lip syncing to We Are the World along with the makeup crew. And that kind of blew up, although I didn't find it. I was glad to pass it along. So most of us had not much of a chance to uh, to get to know her. On the con circuit, a few lucky ones did. I didn't get over to interview her. My good friend Ian Spelling talked to her and, and had her on stage in a panel. So I regret that it makes you think about our time here. So we're a lot of people have been talking about her life, her their enjoyment of her, the loss as of what a wonderful mother she was. And uh, a friend of mine was a friend of hers. And uh, I'm here. We go. I'm. This is um, going to be cool. So. Uh, Alex, are you there? Yay! Hello. <clears throat> are you? Are your? Is your audio good? I don't know. Can you hear me? Uh oh, I'm not hearing you for some reason. Now? We didn't no? have a chance to test. Didn't test. Um. I am seeing you. Oh no! I'm uh, seeing your green audio bar, but not you. Um. I'll try coming back in. Hmm. Okay. Oh, but everybody else can. That's Everyone's very hearing? odd. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's very odd. Let me check my. Uh... I could go out and come back in if you want. This is very strange. But you can't hear me. <laughs> ah. Okay. Everybody else, everybody else can hear you but me, which is strange. This is going to be interesting. All right. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to say, uh, why don't you tell everybody how you knew uh, Annie and um, 
And uh, again, you guys weren't best buds. You didn't have dinner every night. Right, right, right. I know. But just just talk about, because uh, you told me, talk about um, how you knew her and, and your memory of her and, and how the news hit you when you heard. Yeah, um, she was one of my first friends when I moved to L.A. I had a friend who um, helped me get an apartment and she was good friends with Annie. And so um, she introduced me to Annie. And so we all lived in the same building and just one of my first experiences in this crazy city, LA. Um, she was super nice, fun, uh, smart. She could be kind of goofy sometimes. And um, she she lent me her truck one time. I was you know trying to get some stuff into my apartment and she was nice enough to do that. Um, I'm a singer songwriter and a creativity coach. Um, and as a singer songwriter, she, uh, she came to some, see some of my shows. So she come out to the sunset strip and watch me sing. Um, so that was, that was great. And, um, later on, we also became concert buddies and we went to some different shows together, um, which was also really fun. And I mean, I have, I have nothing but great things to say about her. It was incredibly sad when I saw the news the other day, cause I hadn't realized that she was sick. So, um, yeah, she was, she was wonderful. And I'm glad that you all got to experience her a little bit. And I don't, I don't know what else I can tell you exactly. Um, I'll tell you a little funny anecdote. I went to, we went to a Jewel concert and um, I'm a big Jewel fan. And so I was sobbing the entire time just cause it was, made me so emotional. And she was, she was sitting there and she, you know, was asking me if I was okay every, every five minutes cause I was falling apart. So anyway, um, just a wonderful person, warm, sweet, Great mom, great friend, very loyal, very dependable. Um, and the other thing I want to say about her is she just had that that special spark that some people have, you know, that special like it factor. I remember that right away, just thinking, I think she's, yeah, she's really going to go somewhere. And she did. So, yeah. Mm. And guess what? I have your audio now. <laughs> oh, okay. You heard part of that. <laughs> A weird little default I found. But anyway. Um, yeah, um, I, I didn't, but I remember this started because I remember when she was cast and, and I know Alex from our entrepreneur cycles and I'm sorry, I didn't say, I didn't give you a proper introduction. Alex is a music artist. She has, uh, she is a, the founder of creative self revolution. Uh, you should look her up. You should give her, you should check that out. Um, and we have an entrepreneur community, business community. And but you were nice enough to say when the news came out, you went, Larry, I that's so cool. I know Annie and um and knew her from from back when. And sometimes it's not even those working really it's not the working relationships, it's the just casual hang relationships that you said. Um yeah. So anyway, so I so you just kind of watched her career go by, uh knowing. I mean, did you even watch it after you had that occasion to, to fall in for a few years or um and yeah, root, I mean, root her on? This this last, I mean, the concert buddy stuff was about like five years ago, maybe. So she was mm -hmm. pretty far in at that mm -hmm. point. She hadn't done, I mean, I think she'd done Castle at that point. Um, so, I mean, I watched her and stuff. I watched her in Bosch and watched her in 24. And I haven't seen Star Trek yet, which you're all going to be mad at me for. But <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out. Um, we have to have a growth curve from somewhere, Alex. So yeah i was i mean so i followed what she was doing and I'll, I'll tell you the weirdest thing was that um the day before the announcement was made i i thought about her and i went to look on her page and i was like i wonder what she's doing right now and i went over to imdb and i was like i wonder what she's you know what show she's gonna be on and like literally the next day the first thing i saw on sunday was the notice about that she'd passed and so it was yeah uh, it was, that was a weird little universe thing um, I don't know, but it's just, it's really sad. I'm really, really happy to see everybody saying all these wonderful things about her because, um, I know that she, she really valued her work and her working relationships and that was important to her, mm -hmm. but she also, she didn't let it go to her head. She wasn't like, yeah, I've been on all these shows, you know, she was just the same as she always was. So I also really appreciated that about her. Well, there's something about having young kids, especially maybe three young boys that will keep you honest. Yeah. <laughs> That probably helped her. I can vouch for that. Yeah. 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 So mm. she she was she was great. I mean, I don't know what other questions I, I can answer, but um I can just verify everything else you've been reading about her that she 
she really was a one of a kind. Mm -hmm. um, she always made me feel good, you know, when I was around her. And, yeah. So. Well, again, I, I I didn't want to put on for anybody. Like you said, you didn't want to misconstrue anything. But uh, a lot of them on Picard, like I said, it was only the Picard series people had worked with her unless they had a chance to work with her somewhere else. But professionally, people were just, you know, outpouring. Um, and people from the other franchise, the other series and, and projects she, she'd worked on too. And the fandom, mm -hmm. again, some people had their snaps with their, their selfies with her from Chicago and Vegas. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the vast bulk of fandom did not get a chance to know that. Well, always have her performance, which was incredible. And, and many people would say it was one of the highlights of Picard season two, especially the, even those who are in the most critical season. I know you haven't seen it yet. So I guess that maybe that's a um, I should say now you you know your kind of Trek basics or if you sit down to watch your performance are you going to be lost or not to oh put my you god you're putting me on the spot here in front of all these amazing no 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 it's, <laughs> it's all good you just I, I know like a little bit but I probably wouldn't know exactly what was happening with her well yet. I think they have it constructed where you'll be you'll be fine and if you're primarily it doesn't matter how much your Trek credit is or not she gave an incredible performance and and it was tricky it wasn't just your straight up oh here's bad guy here's hero she had a very interestingly bizarre kind of uh, tour de force performance, I think. She she was interesting because she often got played kind of like the bad guy. She got cast as like a serial killer a couple times, like on mm -hmm. Castle she was. She was fantastic at it, but it was so weird because she was such a, such a <laughs> kind, sweet person. Um, so yeah. well, um, I do want to say one other thing for her. Yeah. Um, so that's why they call it acting, but yes. Yes, yes. Well, she so she was really good. Um, is that the, her family did send up a GoFundMe campaign mm -hmm. to to help um, her husband and her boys, and it's it's going well. But if if anybody you know appreciated her mm -hmm. work and wants to help them, that's something you can do. It's on her Instagram page, um, probably on Twitter and some other places. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, but it's in the original post that I put up had it also. Okay. And, uh, I'm gonna say maybe if we're lucky. Uh, someone here in our chat will maybe Scott can put it up in our chat right here, but for sure we'll have it on the links and everything with the, with the show. So anyway, thanks for. Didn't want to make again uh, a big too big a thing out of it, but I just thought uh, fandom uh, Trek fandom is so just get, was just getting used to just just meeting her. So um, so I just thought since I knew you and uh, we could do this easily, just a little a word here as people are still getting to realizing how much they barely as I say we barely knew ye. Annie in Trek fandom, but you knew her before that. So thanks for thanks for coming in and and Alex being my very first guest since I, oh, I didn't even know with a little tech kick up there. Thank you. Oh okay, well that <laughs> feels awesome. Special. So um thank you all and yeah it was just nice to get to honor her for a minute and, and tell you mm -hmm. how wonderful she was because. It's and what do you go? What's your music? How did anybody find your music? If they wanted to do that. Oh, there's um they put the GoFundMe up. Scott's got it. Good, thank you. I thought Scott would great. Awesome. Great, great. Um my music, which she came to see. So if you want to hear what that was like, um, I'm at Alex Music Site on uh on Instagram and I'm at Creative Self Revolution on Instagram too. Which tagline for Creative Self Revolution is Oh dear. Um <laughs> Well, I'm a, I'm a creativity coach, and so I help people be more creative on a personal development level and also on a professional level. Um, it's something that can help every single part of your life, and so I help people really reconnect to that part of themselves, um, whether that's in the sort of corporate workforce setting or whether that's in a personal setting for people who have lost connection with who they are. And I believe creativity is very important, and you all support creativity as you support like this entire universe that you're part of is 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 so creative. So. Yeah. I just want um, to help more people use that part of themselves. Yes. And I, I know you don't emphasize it now, but before the pandemic, uh, you affiliated with me to do an Instagram um, workshop for folks uh, mm -hmm. from Star Trek and for Cosplay World. So uh, some of the, some folks may even remember you from that since we were promoting that. Anyway, thanks for coming by today and dropping in and doing this. And How do I put a comment in? I see some people asking questions. And so I see a private yes. chat, but yes. I would answer the question if I knew where to. Where do uh, I, when I, I? I think when I well, you can you can come back and watch this yourself and join in. I'm gonna I'm going to um, open re. I'm going to. We don't have a green room. We have a purgatory room. <laughs> <laughs> you're grayed out. Yeah. So uh, you could. You're welcome to come back and watch on my channels and jump in the chat too if you want to. Yes, yeah, so I'll I'll come back in and the few of you who who wrote something I will um, respond. Cool. To.
So cool. thank you, thank you again, all. Thank you again, Alex, and thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing a little Annie with us, Annie Wershing today. Okay, great. I'll see you. All right. Yes. Okay. Who? Who? Of course. We, we no tech. We're just flying. We're just flying live. So I was mentioning. So thank you, Alex, again for doing that. And I think she's going to circle around and get back in the chat. So again, guys, gals, peeps, it's kind of an historic day uh, in several ways. So um, our next guest, <laughs> our next guest is uh, not Senator Claghorn. No. Uh, again, we were talking about games uh, last week. And uh, the comeback, the rise and fall and the rise of Star Trek RPGs. And uh, somebody I've had my eye on in, in a world that's rapidly changing on so many fronts. But coming full circle back around, I finally kind of got it here in the last month or so. And since there's a whole new series starting, I wanted to have her in to tell you firsthand. Because I, you all know, I just explained, I am not the world's hugest gamer. I've always had my distance for... <laughs> for various reasons, one of them which was uh, uh, canon fatigue and all the years when licensed products came and went. But you know what? Star Trek, Star Trek Online has been around for 12, 13 years now, and Star Trek Adventures is blowing it up. And uh, so I'm going to ask in now, out of the purgatory room, uh, my good friend, Elisa Pearl. Boom. How does this work? It works great, Elisa. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, Larry. I'm so, it's so good to see you like this. And I'm thank you again. It's a historic day. This is the first day I'm have I've been doing this for five years. And I'm finally, as a one man band, no crew, mm -hmm. we've come so I can do this. And you are Amazing. no stranger to the expansion of tech in virtual. So everybody oh, yeah. say hi to Elisa. Tell us now. I, I'm gonna say real quick, I met Elisa because she was the captain of the first improv comedy although not always a comedy ship next generation or a lot of you may have remembered it or saw their videos or maybe even came live the improvised generation i'm presenting to you here captain thompson but Elisa, you have many many hats she's an actress improviser uh and i'm saying professional gamer which is a thing that the exports have had it for ages so why don't you tell me what's happening and most of all what's going on with i talked a little bit about it last week but you're here in the flesh so mm -hmm. let us know what's going on yeah. So as you said, yeah, I'm a, an actor, writer, pr producer, uh, video game writer now becoming one. And I have been also a professional tabletop role playing game performer slash game master, dungeon master for the past several years. And it's something that I just kind of I, 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 I say I fell into it. But I think funny enough, because of the improvised generation, uh, mm -hmm. that Star Trek improv show we were doing and the fact that I was like a writer at that time and a, an actor, I kind of, it, it all just converged into becoming a tabletop role-playing game professional because those are all the skills that you kind of can pull upon when you're doing that professionally. So, uh, so yeah, the current game that we are about to launch this Monday is called Clear Skies Perseverance and it is a Star Trek Adventures game. My independent group uh streampunks rpg we are a group of i'm sorry i didn't uh, mention streampunks but yes yes yeah yeah Would we're you say that's the producer mm -hmm. okay. yeah we're producing it and then we're partnering with modifius who's the game publisher of star trek adventures yeah there's our promo image this is our high tech uh, uh, graphics but yeah yeah and you can see all our partners down there at the bottom so modifius okay. star trek online we're the streampunks and then cryptic studios which produces star trek online so Star Trek Online, we're actually streaming this on their Twitch channel, and it's their first ongoing TCRPG series. So it's like, yeah, it's just kind of a convergence of all of these um, people and partners and, and groups that all love Star Trek and are doing Star Trek games together now. So now this is, but you're no, this is not the first one. You there's a, there was a Klingon. Now it may not have been the same arrangement mm -hmm. of affiliates and partners, but I mm -hmm. saw you doing your videos of getting into your Klingon non prosthetic yeah. <laughs> makeup, which looked awful good. I mean, Thank you. Good. Really good. <laughs> really good. I knew what you meant. It was a very Klingon yeah, way yeah, of saying yeah. it. <laughs> but it was really, it was well, like, and, and for those taking, you know, score, keeping score at home, it was like, if you really thought about it, it was gaming, it was improv mm -hmm. gaming, acting, and even makeup and cosplay. Right. Were, yeah. You know, combining all those skills. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you're right. This is not the first time we've done a Star Trek Avengers campaign. Um, me and Eric both were game masters 
of the Blood of the Void. He started it off as the Game Master and then I took over. And then we also did two other Starfleet, like Starship kind of classic mm -hmm. Star Trek Avengers campaign. The first one was called Shield of Tomorrow. And that was with Geek and Sundry. And then the other one was called Clear Skies. And that was our first game as an independent group, the Stream Punks, as the Stream Punks. And then Blood of the Void came, was kind of simultaneous with that one as well. Yeah. And Clear Skies is just, is not, it's just your your brand your um, yeah it's the universe it's yours it's something mm -hmm. else you're a part of that was preformed what was the story no about? yeah clear skies so that first clear skies campaign eric ran that i didn't i wasn't a regular player in that but i uh was a guest and so that was just kind of reestablishing our own little sandbox because shield of tomorrow was on the geek and sundry channel it's owned by a different like that show is right. owned by a company and we don't really own that so <laughs> we were like we still want to play star trek adventures we you know those characters mm -hmm. are now in that campaign owned by someone else so we'll just start our own fresh new sandbox and that's what clear skies is and so clear skies perseverance if you think about it like if tng is clear clear skies is the, the tng then clear skies perseverance is like our ds9 it's kind of like just moving over to this part of the sandbox in that same okay. world Okay. So, but the big news is, so, uh, and I, I, this is my high-tech graphics. We'll, we'll do for our YouTube archive, but Fancy. Uh, look at the cast you've got. And I know <laughs> one person everybody knows, most people that they're on the, mm -hmm. Ron Gordon, who is making a name for herself in many ways. She's multi-talented too, but folks know her mm -hmm. as voice of, um, of the uh, Prodigy computer on the Protostar. And she yep. did a character at the finale, but uh, she's getting around and she's, you know, cabaret singing and the whole night yeah and all of that but you've got a great cast those are all mm -hmm. voice actors or they're gamers who have been other franchises or who who else is in the show yeah so by the way bonnie we've been playing with bonnie since shield of tomorrow like she was one oh. of the original cast members as well so, so she predates or at least oh yeah. Same time. yeah bonnie bonnie is like a, a veteran i was gonna say veteran but yeah like she just like me and eric and sam like we've all been gaming together since like 2017 or earlier and Bonnie was right there with us too on Shield of Tomorrow. And um, so she's, yeah, I love that she is busy with so much other stuff, but she's definitely like, was like, I definitely wanna come and play. She's making time because we love playing together. And this is a really great fun space for us as performers and as Trekkies to just mm -hmm. like have fun, create some content. And it's, it's, it's just the best, we love doing it. Uh, but yeah, our cast, um, so besides Bonnie, we have Danielle Radford, who has been on Honest Trailers. She's an amazing comedian, writer, actress. Uh, she's popped up in a lot of other nerd media as well, because she's a big old nerd. And um, we have Noir Enigma, who's an incredible game master and TTRPG performer and diehard Trekkie, DS9, like Captain Sisko mm -hmm. for life. <laughs> Noir, Noir is like the DS9 fan. And then, of course, Eric Campbell, who is getting to actually play as a player for the first time in Star Trek Adventures, because he's been a game master in it for years and has never gotten oh, to actually be okay. a full player, not just guessing, but just like at the table every week. So mm -hmm. we're super excited for him to have that experience. And then Sam DeLev, who is our co-producer and again, one of the OGs, Stream Punks, Shield of Tomorrow. Uh, Sam is incredible and always comes up with these amazing characters who are very layered and interesting. And Sam is also an incredible advocate for disability and for uh, gender nonconformity and non-binary people. And just like Sam is, Sam is my hero. Sam is awesome. Uh, and then who else? We have Jade Law, who is coming back to our table she was on the blood of the void klingon campaign so now she's playing a human not a klingon mm -hmm. and what was the name of the klingon campaign uh blood of the void blood of the void yes how do you get more klingon spacey than that uh, yes. for a campaign yeah, yeah, yeah. yes so, uh yeah oh, oh and then there's one more cast member i sure. i would be remiss to not mention caitlin bruder who uh, has been playing with us for the past year on other campaigns at Streampunks. And she's an incredible performer and uh, character creator and also an incredible artist. And some of our promo art has been put together by Caitlin as well. Hmm. So everybody there was a Trek fan as well as being, uh, and you had, you had one that was a game master hadn't played, but everybody is, mm -hmm. is 
back home, whatever, growing up kid, recently gamer. So you've got gamers. Yeah, so Nobody, nobody's a rookie here. There's no, right. oh, watch them develop. Okay. Not right. There's no, story, there's no like rookies. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's no rookies, but everyone has varying levels of like Trek knowledge and Trek fandom. I think everyone's definitely a Trekkie, but some people are like mm -hmm. me and you like have too much Trek in their brain. And some people are kind of like more, uh, have watched TNG and maybe some of the newer Trek, or you know, not as like well versed on Star Trek. So we well, have a definitely a range. The game master. Oh wait, you are. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we definitely have a range of of like Star mm -hmm. Trek knowledge, uh, which is great because the thing for me um, when I play these games, I always want to bring in newer people, and it's not about like adhering to Trek canon because we're creating our own stories, mm -hmm. and we that's the beauty of like. You know, yes, I would love to write on a Star Trek series, but the view, beauty of being a game master of a Star Trek Adventures game is that we're this is our sandbox. We are choosing what canon to honor, and we're creating our own otherwise. Not and, unlike the years that you were Captain Thompson and, and the crew absolutely. of the Manly doing the same yeah. thing, taking the universe exactly and making it your own. And if something's got bent or invented, or whether it was yep. for fun or whatever. So be it. So be but, it. Exactly. And, your, and your Bible here is the Star Trek Adventures manuals, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Which are awesome. I I, I showed yeah. off last week, uh, and I don't know if you knew this. So for all those not with us last week, since I haven't put anything away, um, this is the deluxe edition, and I'm sure you know it very well. Yes, I and love it. You know it. it's inside, right? On the I front leaves. Yay. Yeah, it's our official <laughs> Klingon. Yeah, layout for the Empire, and then I have your map right here, Larry. Leaf. I told you, I already, I have my map hanging up here. I can show you. Well, you know, I said when they first came up with the idea and approached me of this, of the posters. Yeah. Oh, wow. There you go. Yeah. Gang. That's Larry's map from the Stellar Cartography book. Yes. And I should say, um, I'm trying to think who, uh, yeah, my mine and the artists that made it happen. Always want to say, I didn't do the yes. next. Yes. Ali did the uh, nebular maps that were really, really pretty. Ali oh, yeah. Reese. Uh, and map 10 is Jeff Mandel's. Nice. Uh, but um, but I knew when they had that idea and said posters, for one thing, you'd look online and everyone was taking Jeff's original book and making scans of those pages and trying to, mm. people were frustrated because it was limited by the book format. Mm -hmm. And the minute they said posters, I, yeah. Huh? It's, yeah, it's hard. Like I imagine how much, I can only imagine how much work went into making all of these maps because the the quadrants are laid out as if they're a grid, but it's a galaxy. So there's depth and some areas like one star system is going to be down here and one's mm -hmm. going to be up here. So like, I can only imagine how hard that must've been to put those. Well, there's fans. Up. Well, it's, you know, I didn't invent it. This is a science, a, a fun science that goes back to the seventies and different versions and people, but everybody was always dealing in 2d. Right. Was, you know, we didn't have a hollow. Right. You know, we're starting to get to the idea now where we might eventually have little hollow viewers, but mm -hmm. the 2D is also covered up a multitude of sins of the right as we try to reconcile with the real science and what right. the writers didn't know. And the famous, oh, this week warp nine is going to fudge for this. <laughs> right. Fudge. So some of that goes into it. But overall, taking um, finally the format that Mike Okuda came up with in TNG when they had when the price when the Fringy Pod and Jordy and Data were chasing them and they had to be stranded. And mm -hmm. Mike came up with the quadrant system as a quickie way to get that across. Mm -hmm. And then it got, and then they started putting it. Well, where the Klingons and Romans are down here. Oh, now the Borg and Bajor is going to be over here for DS9. Mm -hmm. And oh, Voyager is going to go into the, you know, so it gradually got to be, oh, we'll throw the Borg in the Delta Quadrant. And that mm -hmm. way they can be, you know. So all of that was, and then Jeff Mandel came in and threw the real science at it even more than Mike had. And for Enterprise, because Enterprise was close in and they weren't mm -hmm. all over the place. So anyway, they were, there's always been, I talk about this with um, Andre or with Dr. Aaron is, you know, the real science overlap that's, that people have tried to bring to it. Retcon if it wasn't there to begin with. So anyway, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, the, uh, the thing about those maps is they were built over time, I didn't do anything out of the bill. I got to update them. And they had the poster mm -hmm. idea. And the bottom line to this is I said, oh, my God, whatever stripe of gamer they are, gamers are going to love these. Yeah. And yeah. put them under plastic and do, yep. you know, either if you're doing click ships or mm -hmm. you're just planning a story or whatever you're doing, people are going to love it. And so, yeah, long story short, too late to say <laughs> every time I see a gamer that has the maps on the wall or on the table, I'm just mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And talk like to bring back what you said before about the digital expansion of gaming. That's the thing. Like I, I, I have just as well, maybe not just as many, but I have a lot of physical tools like at right here. Like I have a physical rules summary from Star Trek Adventures on my desk. I have two of the books here. I have the game master screen, all physical. And then I have the physical map, but I also have a lot of digital tools as well. So I think that's the beauty of TTRPG gaming right now. We have virtual tabletop tools. We have map making tools, which I'm about to dive into for Clear Skies Perseverance, like making some maps for our facilities. And I love that it's not just, you know, I, I love tactile things. I always love to have like the physical book mm -hmm. and get to like write and make tabs and things like that. But the digital tools are so, so useful as well. From scrambling now we've been talking about all this and people mo most people get what gaming is like but what is this i mean i think you had a preview night last week you're going to start talk about what's happening but what is the viewer it's it's you guys are on camera so are we just watching you play and game or what yeah. are we what's what's the audience do do they pay to get in did, can anybody no. watch i mean what how does it work what's the anyone can watch um we yeah it's just you know, we are on twitch.tv slash cryptic studio, which is the Star Trek online Twitch channel. It is free to watch. If you'd like to support us, you can subscribe to our coffee or our Patreon, which is stream punks RPG on either, either of those pages, KO dash F I, if you haven't heard of that, um, that website yet, uh, you can support us that way. And if you do support us there, you can get, depending on what level you sign up for, you can get some uh, insider info and special content from all of our different games that we have going on. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's free to watch. Um, we have the live show on Mondays, and then it will go up in the VODs video on demand on our YouTube, which is Streampunks RPG. And that's it. It's like pretty much you just click on that link and you watch it. The shows are three hours, so a lot of people who are regular watchers of TTRPGs will either have it on in the background as they're washing dishes or taking care of their home or whatever, or when they're working too. Some people yeah. like to have some like background noise, uh, or you can just sit and watch like it's a three hour show or you're binge watching three episodes of Star Trek. <laughs> Do you get, so you, so the Klingon series, Blood of the Void, oh, that's so mm -hmm. great. Um, and the first one, uh, the agents, uh, not agents of shield. <laughs> <laughs> that mistake happened a lot early on. I remember <laughs> I was going to say, so did you, do you get like the equivalent? I mean, it's comments in your threads, but do you get the equivalent of fan mail? I mean, oh yeah. Know, you have a oh, lot of feedback. Yeah. yeah. With shield of tomorrow, with all of the shows we have, we have, we have what we call the ox crew, which mm. is uh, short for auxiliary crew. And they are just the group of fans that has snowballed it's you know over the years it's right. we've gained different people but they are like this core group of fans who are mainly our coffee and patreon supporters and also have been here with us from the beginning when we started playing shield of tomorrow and a lot of those members would send us yes send, send us fan mail send us really lovely letters and cards and then also like make us art and make us things like i have I'm, they're all in the other room but my character was a vulcan science officer and they would like make us like I have a couple of dolls that people made of us, oh, like a Funko yeah. Pop version of of my character and a knit doll and a little penguin version of her. I also have this like a dice tray, a, a custom made Star Trek dice tray. Like it, people were very sweet and, and generous. And then fan art like you can probably you might have to scroll back now. But if you search like Ox Crew Shield of Tomorrow hashtags on Twitter, you would find tons of fan art from just over the years. And one of our players now, Caitlin Bruder, was one of the people who early on was making fan art of our first game. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, she now has become I, one of our, our ensemble members. The first time somebody sent me fan art of my McCoy for those two episodes of Continues, it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> mm. I get it. When all the actors talk about having their action figure for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. I, again, I'm doing some new muscles here today. So I normally, uh, the chat is just going by and it's just me yapping. And uh, we've got people acting like a normal chat. And I'm trying to see, are you, you can you, you don't get the chat, do you? I see. Yes, I do. I see. See. Okay. I'm I think trying is, to. Oh, it's um, all of them, huh? I see YouTube yeah, yeah. and Facebook and, and Twitch. We're global. We have Germans. We have Brits. We have. We have Australian. Germans. We have Brits. I'm sorry. That sounded like a musical, and I just needed to sing it for a second. That I would not be the one to stop me. you. 
<laughs> Sometimes I sing things randomly. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm now looking at the chat. Hey, folks. Yeah, yeah. I back scrolled to about 1350 here. 1350 on your dial. 1350. Um, okay. Somebody said, okay, so hold on a minute. Uh, wow. So Duralta, who is German, I was. he says, how long did it take you to do your Klingon get-up makeup? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, it was all it was all makeup. It was all yeah, brush and makeup. And no I did like, yeah, right? the nose ridges. Yeah, no prosthetics, nose ridges and shading. So it was like eyeliner and shading. And um, I think, you know, when I first was figuring out how to do it, I went on YouTube and I did a, a couple of tries mm -hmm. just to figure it out. Once I figured it out, uh, by the way, I was the game master of that game for most of the time. So when I was a player for like a few episodes, I think no more than 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. To get it like the makeup yeah. done. There's no gluing. There's no drying. There's right. No, it's just putting just... on. It's about knowing where to put things. Right. Once you figure out how yeah. to do it, you can just do it each time. Kind of had a shorthand. Like yeah, light and shadow. I think, highlight I think the shadow. makeup itself, maybe even twenty minutes, and then putting on my like you know, I think I wore either a wig or my hair was a certain way, and then I had like you know my Klingon armor mm -hmm. that I wore for that. So yeah, probably like no more than twenty to thirty minutes. Okay, I'm trying to see. Uh, <laughs> Duralta says you can never have too much Trek on your brain. Um, that is that is a good point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Nathaniel says I'm glad the topic of RPG and Trek is getting covered again. Well, you know, I mean, I said this last week. It just in a broad swath, when everything computer and digital came in, it kind of made everything tabletop take a back seat, and everybody went gaga for T. But it's like the real world CG world. You could have almost too much, and then things go back to the analog versions, I guess you'd say. And yeah, I don't, I don't. So the rise of Star Trek Adventures on its own as a viable financial commercial thing, and people mm -hmm. were playing. And then the pandemic, you know. Oh, yeah. You had Zoom fatigue, so yeah, you could. Well, you mm -hmm. could, I mean, you could virtually game, but people, if they could, if they could have a pod, then they love yeah. that connection, you know, a small way. Yeah, for sure. Um, 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 I'm just like, I thought I saw... And by the way, you can, I'm seeing a lot of people, yeah, when we were talking about the improvised generation, and mm -hmm. you can find all of these shows that I mentioned on YouTube. So if you search just the name, so Blood of the Void, Shield of Tomorrow, the original Clear Skies, um, and the improvised generation, you can find all of those shows on YouTube. Just, just Google them. So Nathaniel says, uh, since it's a tradition to modify or hack the rules of RPGs, what ideas have you brought into STA to make it work for your players? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, hmm, trying to think, I'm not sure if there's any specific mechanics that I've brought in. I know we have some house rules mm -hmm. and we typically will do some type of meta cur currency. So in the game rules there's the momentum is the me meta currency for the players um where they can kind of use a point of momentum to gain some type of benefits or create an advantage or keep the initiative in game and so in the stream punks our tradition has been because we have coffee supporters um when you're at a certain level or higher, you can. So coffee to... is another version of Patreon. Yeah, yeah, and we have both, okay. but we're mainly on coffee. We just have kept the Patreon open for the people who are kind of still on Patreon and haven't switched over to coffee yet. Um, so coffee is the new, the place that people should sign up if they'd like to. But on our coffee at the higher levels, you also get to contribute a story point to our game. And I haven't decided how I'm going to implement it in our game yet, uh -huh. but there will be something where you know, it'll be a different type of meta currency from momentum. So I'm still working that out for this game. So people can contribute specific points mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever. Yeah. And so what happens is if you're, if someone in the game is saying, you know, I really want to like, I want to make sure this role goes well, or I want an advantage. I want to use a story point. Then the game master, usually it's Eric. Now it's me. will go to our list of contributors and say, okay, let's say they're all to Trekkie. Uh, your story point is going to be used. Thank you, Duralta. So you get a little shout out. In I was going to say, it needs to be like, you know, like adopt a highway or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you say, and we'd like to thank. Yes, exactly. That's exactly for that, it. For that adjective or something, yeah. whatever, you know. 
Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, so speaking of Duralta, he said, are there Shields of Tomorrow fanfics yet? Oh my <laughs> God. Yes, there seen? are. <laughs> Seriously? I don't know how to find them, but I think you can find them if you search on the internet really hard. Yep. I, I know I have, I saw some that pop like that popped up back when we were live. So yes. Well, how, so that's the thing. How long is each series run? Are, are they uniform? Uh, no. So, uh, Shields of Tomorrow ran for a year. Wow. And I yeah, it was, and we did three hours a week for a year with very few breaks. Three, we had, Larry, before all the new Star Trek came out, we had created oh. more hours of Star Trek story than all of Star Trek at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> it was, it's a lot. You can watch the whole realize. thing on YouTube. I did not <laughs> It realize. might take time. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that was a year. Blood well, three boy. hours a week for 52 weeks or 50, that's 150 hours. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think now actual Star Trek has surpassed because there's like several new shows at this point. But yeah, right, right. Um, we sure. had that distinction for like a few years. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, and then Blood of the, oh, Clear Skies also ran for, I think, a year, maybe a year and a few months. And... And then Blood of the Void ran for about a year, but we were a monthly game, so it was once mm. a month for so a, a year. So a little on you all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's it's like, it's again, because I just kind of like rolled into this lifestyle of be, being a gamer and tabletop I, gamer, yeah. I think back like some of our games like Shield of Tomorrow, we played at 10 p.m. We started at 10 p.m. I'm like, how did we do that? On stream, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Pacific. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. you're 2 a.m. in the east and yeah. yeah. And then uh, morning risers on the continent. Uh -huh. I can't uh, by the way, my, I'm doing that right now. <laughs> my friend uh, Cairo here says, and Austrians are here too. Yes. Hello, yeah. Austrians. <laughs> the German, the, uh, yeah. So no, I'm just, so, um, oh, I was going to ask you something. It'll come back to me. I, uh, oh, so what's, so what is the plan for, what well, part of the plan for, um, Clear Scott for do you say perseverance or perseverance? Yeah, sure. Oh, I I've, say perseverance. I've listened to so much British TV oh. now that I la I lapse into pers perseverance because it sounds oh. classier, but that's not what people oh, are saying. It does. I say well, perseverance because oh, that's yeah. the the way NASA people right. say it. So yes, yeah. And we are. It is our namesake. We're on Mars, and it is you know very okay. Mars uh, inspired. So okay, what what era is it? So the year is 2414. So oh, it's okay. It's a, a bit little into the post future. Picard, uh huh. A little yep. pre where STO is right now. Right? Exactly. It, we're actually, yeah, we're kind of sandwiched in the more recent years of STO timeline. And um, and that's another fun thing for me as the game master, like going into this and preparing and figuring out where in the where in time are we? Utopia Planitia, we're honoring the Picard what was established in early mm -hmm. season one of Picard about what happened on Utopia Planitia. I won't spoil it, but go watch that. Uh, something really big happens. We honor that history and I wanted to build a timeline based off of that. And then also include Star Trek Online's timeline. So that's what we're working with. Is Mars still burning? Mars, okay, Mars has been re-terraformed, but Okay. But it is a planet that went through a big, nat not well, not so natural disaster, a big disaster, let's say. Right. right. So every once in a while, there might be some fire clouds. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah. But otherwise, yes, Mars has been restored and re-terraformed okay. and the, the, the station has been rebuilt. And which okay. is why, as a game master, another thing is kind of nice because, like, I get to rebuild Utopia Planitia. Like, I decide. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what buildings are where? And that is what I call until it's on screen. That's what I call a yeah. uh, cannon in a vacuum. It's yeah, like, exactly. If there's nothing there. Come up with a good thing, and you can placehold that until somebody gets around to it in yeah. a year or twenty years or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it'll always just be our little cocoon of story. Like, yeah. you know, other things will. Uh, um, negate it like star trek canon i'm sure we'll revisit utopia planitia in, in more depth in the future but that's okay our game is just in our little cocoon and well, that's it i just had a boom boom and um and I, oh i want to say when did you need to be leave us we got oh, on a roll like i said yeah i know right? right uh two like i i have like six minutes basically okay okay <laughs> we're good we're good uh because it'll just go back to me talking to the chat and looking at some stuff and it'll be boring yeah we're um, more chat questions <laughs> no um 
I started to say you were talking about just you doing your cocoon of canon, but you know, the gamers of I mean, it took a while to get this going, but by the end of the Berman run, everybody running Enterprise, like Mike Sussman had done the FASA game manuals and was they were pulling game points. They were especially Andorian things were coming out of oh. not connected, not in a massive way, but they would pull words and concepts and weapons and, and people and, and plug them into scripts. Because no, they wouldn't have been. In. So yeah. there's so there's bits of that. And then you know, and and yesteryear affected the animated show affected and even though they weren't canon at the time, but everybody mm -hmm. used yesteryear as the basis for young Spock and Vulcans and weird little school cube dome things and mm -hmm. what they look like, you know. Anyway, my point is that a lot of uh and now we got the explosion of of you know 10 only 10 hours a year, but it's five series and it's a whole plethora of different writers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are young writers coming up, and a lot of them are very much of, of the gaming era. So a lot of gamings and comics and books and book pieces are finding their way in even more. And so the, so don't knock it, what you're putting out there into the world. And you're 300. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're 300 <laughs> I mean, either next year or five years from now, somebody may pull up one of your threads when they circle back around to Mars in 2010, yeah. whatever. What, what year is it? 2414. 2414. Yeah. I was gonna say 04, but 14. Um uh and and that's where and that's kind of the field that uh Mike McMahon's bunch on lower decks is plowing, as as you know, and even prod and prodigies two years ahead of lower decks. They're all just on the other side of the synth, but some of those things mm -hmm. about Mars and anything, anybody that's putting it out there, and especially since you guys are in tandem uh with the affiliates with the licensees there. Mm -hmm. in a quasi official there's so much quasi officials floating around right. i'm just saying don't be surprised if a year from now or five years or ten years from now somebody plucks something out of something you did there are certain things about our utopia planitia that i would be very delighted if they ended up in star trek canon <laughs> have you had any feedback from anybody working on the on official star trek Enterprise generation yeah or, or even like under the table communication or we no, love what you're really. doing keep it up or no, okay. not I as a Lisa well, have you had will a, now. Yeah, well, yeah, if, hopefully. Um I'm yeah, it's we're in a funny place because both with improvised generation and with our games, we are we're working with licensees, we're using licensed products, so we're not trying to like um yeah, it's it's kind of complicated. I don't even know if we should get into it here, but what mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is we always are respectful of right. canon. We're also respectful of Star Trek uh and they're you know they own star trek we're just creating our own it's somewhere between fan content and something else i'm not sure but at the same time you're promoting the licensed mm -hmm. uh, rpg game so yeah you know, yeah and promoting yeah. not promoting sales hey go buy it but it, obviously right. if people want to go play they have to in the time honored yeah. way that gaming is done, tabletop gaming. Oh, is done. totally. And we want them. And yeah, the whole point is not the whole point, but like that's why we partner with these licensees because we want to help bring people to those products and start their own games and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just scooping through questions here. Somebody, uh, oh, Duralta is always good for questions. He says, What was the most, have you had one, I guess, and what was the most difficult Kobayashi Maru esque RPG scenario that you cooked up? <laughs> I talked last week about some pathological DMs back in the early days that were just designed oh. the scenario just to kill people, oh, to eventually oh, kill yeah. people, like outsmart me, like it was a challenge. Uh -huh. How you know? Right. And then they would get enraged when you would outsmart it, and they would just <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> these psychopathic days of D and D and things. Yeah. So those, yeah, like the you know, no win scenarios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those I love when those happen. Sometimes it's engineered and sometimes they just happen. And so the first thing I thought of was actually not even a Star Trek game. It was a private Buffy game that I ran for about a mm -hmm. year. And there was <laughs> there's there's a couple of fun funny things about this example I'm going to give because First of all, the first very first episode, I had created an NPC that I loved, which is always a mistake as a as a GM. Like, don't love those NPCs too much because they will get murdered by your party. <sighs> sure enough, I made this NPC who was supposed to be a big bad, and they literally just chopped her head off and like 
one round of combat. Like she was done. I was like, oh no. So I found a way to re bring her back to life. She had mm -hmm. some type of like curse, uh, curse contract with a witch that made her unkillable. <laughs> and then, so she came back as a regular character. But what ended up happening is that they sort of took her under her their wing. And she said, you know what? This witch is worse. The witch became the big, bad, evil guy. Mm -hmm. And then the party had to work with this vampire to defeat the big bad evil guy. So she became part of their like group. But and then she was like trying to reform. She's like, oh, I've been a vampire for a long time and I'm never going to die. Like, I don't want to live this way. Maybe I should start a blood bank. Can you help me? So they like were talking about helping her find a, a legit way, you know, go clean. <laughs> like, So that character. But anyway, the Kopiyashi Maru to me was like do we they can always just dust a vampire right mm -hmm. but then at what point is it actually a better choice to to like choose to work with her and by making her the key to defeating that witch character that's why i was like hey you can't kill her this time you actually need her uh so yeah that that's the the one i thought of and then let's see like the klingon game i feel like we had um plenty of those i assume that sounds very klingon yes yeah. yeah exactly yeah um, die with honor today or you know have a mm -hmm. or, continuance of life or whatever. Yeah. I know one of our our players, Quincy Surismith, played a diplomatic Klingon. They all were warriors, right? They were all trained right. as uh, warriors. Some well, of them yeah, were the fish out of water Klingon, like the clerics and the scientists. <laughs> yeah. Those are awesome yeah. to play. Oh, yeah. And what I loved about our party is that a lot of our characters, my players created characters that came from maybe like a farmer's cast and then became a warrior or like the diplomatic and then mm -hmm. was also a warrior, but was like a counselor to a... Uh, the the high council members or the head of a household or uh, a head of a Klingon house, something like that. But they all had very diverse backgrounds. And Quincy's character, I remember distinctly, there were definitely some times when um, things could have come to blows. I think there was an, a situation with some Nausicans who had like uh, gotten on their ship and were about to like throw down. And Quincy's character just totally quelled the situation somehow. And it was just quelled. Yeah. That would be and a good thing on where with a Q. Yeah, I'm just yeah, putting <laughs> on name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, quelsome. Uh, I'm <laughs> keeping an eye on the clock. I don't want to. I mm -hmm. don't want to overkeep you. Somebody, I was scrolling on Dan. Um, oh, Cairo from Austria, from Vienna said, "Are you pulling in things that happen in the STO storylines?" Mm, a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of in the background. There are some history and lore that will be mentioned from STO. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of, not to give too much away, and also not to say too much in, in case it changes before it gets on screen. Um, in general, what has happened in STO timeline informs how the Utopia Planitia station is currently running. Mm. If you think about it, you know, the STO timeline, they have just come out of basically two wars, two wars back to back. And so this is a just slightly post-war time shipyard. That's gonna inform how how things are done here. So Nathaniel says, is there a Trek equivalent of the murder hobo? <laughs> I think that would be Klingons. <laughs> 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 oh, listen, I, uh, let's, 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 we should wrap up, I think, but what's, um, what, so people, we got everybody revved up now. What, how do people find it? What's the hours? Yeah. What's, the, what's the deets? Yeah. So we're live Mondays, six to 9 PM Pacific. We're on twitch.tv slash cryptic studios at that time. And then if you're in, since we have a lot of folks in Europe, uh, it's live because it'll be pretty late for you. You can also catch it on the VODs on our YouTube, which is Stream Punks RPG on YouTube. Okay. Or you can get up Rise and Shine. If you're nine, that's... Uh, six to that's nine. Five. Yeah. It's five UK, six on, on the continent, I think. It's eight hours ahead of Pacific. Eight hours, yeah. Yeah. So 2 oh, a.m. I think six to yeah. nine. Six. Wait, nine? Yeah. Nine Pacific? Yes, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking nine. Okay, yes, you're right. Yeah, it's 2 a.m. Mm -hmm in Britain and 3 a.m. <laughs> so it's like my evening portal um, portal sessions. Uh, so starts Monday and runs how many weeks? Um, we're doing a roughly three months. Okay. Getting yeah. getting saner on yourself, like easier on yourselves there. <laughs> yeah, we're seasonal now. And then that also lets us play different games. Like, you know, we just finished a three or so, three or four month alien campaign. 
And now we're doing Star mm -hmm. Trek and then we'll do something else in three months. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming by. This is, thank you for being on a big day for me. I had the Yay. with Alex. Congratulations. Smooth out for you and not one, but two, because I wanted to get, I wanted to make another mention. I almost tried to do this last week and it just didn't work out in time, but I just thought it was great timing. It was time to talk about the whole field. I talked about the history and, and we're, I'm sensitive to the fact that we're in a hiatus time. We're all waiting on Picard to come back. And mm -hmm. so I've been kind of off on what are people doing to fill up their time in the hiatus. And this is mm -hmm. an awesome way, whether you're gaming on your own or watching you all or both, uh, and maybe jumping in on your Patreon and your coffee now. I was not, I was twice now in one day, I've had people talk about being on coffee. And I'm like, oh. okay, I got to get caught up. Oh, there you go. So there we go. Um, and we'll post links. We've mentioned them here. We'll get some links on our, on our posted archive here too. So, but hey, thank you so much. So good to see you. Good thank to see you. you. Yes. Great to see you, yeah, Larry. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, sure thing. And we'll be watching, um, Perseverance. Yay. Woo. <laughs> <continent>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. And that friends is how we do that. All righty. Well, that was enough of something completely different. Speaking of my Brit friends. So how's everybody? Uh, listen, I'm going to, um, that's going to be our first, <laughs> that's going to be our place. Man, we, we um, that was something. So I'm, don't go anywhere if you're watching live. Um, if you're watching later on YouTube, uh, come join us live if you can on Tuesday. But thank you even now watching later. That's our first time to have actual guests on Trek on Tuesdays Live. Thank you, virtual world, for finally getting... So what was it? 2017? There was no way, no way I could have... They, there was the production value to be a one-man band and have guests join you. I don't know if there was the bandwidth to have guests join you on a virtual stream. You were just lucky to throw your little signal out on Facebook Live. <laughs> The whole big thing at the beginning was Facebook Live or Periscope? Facebook Live or Periscope? So anyway, to paraphrase, yeah, to feel, to paraphrase Buzz Aldrin, just get your ass to virtual. And that's what we did. So, hey, everybody, uh, historic day today. Long overdue. I've been trying to get to this for the last few months, but here we are. Hello, 2023. Hopefully a better, shinier year in a lot of ways. And all of you all who got to join us. And if you're watching later, yeah, maybe you can jump in sometime live with us at 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 9 UK time, right? Yes, <laughs> and 10 Central Europe. Um, and if you are leaving us right now, please and thank you for joining us. And hey, uh, here's where I love to shout out and I need to update this. Please and thanks to our, our Patreons. I have Patreon. <laughs> maybe I should look at coffee. I don't know. But on our Patreons, I want to thank our TTL club. Yep, Diana Hopkins, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, Anne-Marie Siegel, Keith Rombach, Justin, Justin Porteous, Nathaniel Robinson, Andrew Kaczynski, Pranakasha Productions, Gay Clevin Lundstrom, and Galinda Bruton. And hey, our live wires are just a notch. <laughs> have their own separate gang. Our live wires, Halbert Gunn Johnson, Robert McLean, Alan Hoensey, J.R. Poole, Byron Bailey, David Gregory, and Casey Shafsky. Thanks so much, all of you all. And if you're wondering what the fuss is about, it's our simple, my simple dimple Patreon at Trekland slash Trekland Live, five and 10 bucks a month. Um, and you can help support things like that. And thanks to all of you all for your support over the last year or so, finally allowing things to happen where I can I can breathe a little bit and all everything else going on in Trekland and settle down to focus on this one big thing aside from aside from perseverance starting monday right here and now if you're in socal area or if you're going on the cruise this is the last call the march 3rd is sold out <laughs> and february 23rd a one day special trekline treks i call it the away days because it's pre-planned we're going to four location sites and lunch in six hours the day before the cruise sails, I've got uh, nine folks. I have four seats open, and I just had a nibble about two. So if you're thinking at all about this, don't have to be on the cruise. So if you're just there, or if you just bring yourself to LA to jump in with us, it's we're starting and stopping in Hollywood. It's six hours, ten to four ish is the plan. I got four seats left, and by tonight that may be two. And I'm at the cutoff time. We've got the vehicle. I know that. I but I'm. It's the it's the little extras we need to get get on with. So 
if you're interested, let me know ASAP. Of course, it's another week for the Trek Files. Oh my gosh, we are into the... I've, I guess we're on top of things because I'm thinking of things in terms of season. We're on a dead run to the end of our season coming up in a few weeks. And we are, we are really in a Picard mode. We've had Dave Blass, production designer, and the great Terry Metalis, um, since I've known from his assistant days, uh, who's, it's so awesome that he's climbed the ladder in Hollywood and running shows now, 12 Monkeys and now Picard. Our guest this week is a break from that because it's the 25th anniversary of Star Trek The Experience. Gary Goddard, who owned and drove, was the creative genius behind the landmark company that worked on theme park rides and attractions and concepts. He was a huge Trek fan. Um, his history with the abortive first plan for Vegas and then what we all know is Star Trek The Experience. And we've got storyboards from Paramount that he said, this is nice, but we can do better. <laughs> That's all on The Trek Files this week. It's been out already. You can go over to uh, The Trek Files on Facebook and get the storyboards, the documents this week. But of course, you can get the podcast wherever fine podcasts are caught. And of course, podcast.roddenberry.com, home for all the great podcasts. Mission Log Live is still on hiatus. They'll be back in a couple of weeks. But we are marching down the line to our season finale. Uh, you don't want to miss the last two shows this season. You don't want to miss this one. You don't want to miss the last few we had before it. Okay. If you're leaving us now, I'll just remind you that I'm at Larry Nimichuk on Mastodon and Twitter. Uh, Larry Nimichuk's Trekland. Everything you're watching right now, wherever you are, please like and subscribe us, especially on YouTube and Instagram. And Portal47.net if you want to. Never, never lose that con blues feeling or the post cruise blues. You want to be there all year long? It's a mini con all year long, portal47.net with guests and roundtable and my stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We've got portales in the chat today. Take a look and join us. And for right now, if you're leaving us on foot YouTube, I will just say, please, please, please stay healthy. Do all the things. Stay woke. And I mean, check your sources. And trek well and thanks for being here for an awesome show even more awesome than normal historic i think they call it i need a double dip before we go on with the live so this is interesting i'm going to ask everybody if you had a question from earlier, I'm not going to go back scroll because I'll back scroll through everything with Alex and then everything with Eliza. So if you're still with me and you really wanted to ask a real question, everybody got your conversations and weather reports and local politics out the way. <laughs> if you really want to get into a real question, uh, can you restate it, please? And that way I won't go back. I won't do that this week. Hey, this is a new a new mode here. I'm going to I'm going to work this out. It just struck me that since I had two guests uh, and didn't timestamp anything, that I'll spend a lot of time back scrolling and then coming down. So um, if it was really something you're curious about this week, uh, just restate it, would you? I'm going to pick up from where uh, everything tailed off with Elisa here. And while you're doing that, I'm going to look at, yes, actually the Parrot Analytics uh, for what they're worth. <laughs> if you're new to, to, to live today with us, Trekline Tuesdays Live, on a Wednesday this week, but nobody watching later cares. Uh, hey, um, the Parrot Analytics, Parrot Analytics is a company data mining the internet, particularly about TV ratings, particularly because the digital streamers don't use, old. we've been saying this for so many years now, but yeah, so the old school and Nielsen's is trying madly to adapt. Um, they may be gradually getting there. Maybe we can watch the digital Nielsen's, the streaming Niel Nielsen's. Um, Elisa said, I'd never heard anybody actually say VOD uh, as a word. So she said the VODs, video on demand, which is, you know, what streaming is, all the, the streaming channels. Um, I'm going to catch up with uh, actually some Parrot Analytics ratings for Picard and, well, for the top 10. The top 10 didn't, again, <laughs> haven't been updated since January 20th. And we got those last week. So there's no point. There's no new top tens to show. However, I did see um, Picard has been updated as a single show. And let's just watch that. 
it's definitely on a spike. Now, Parrot uses their own little algorithm called average demand expression, which is looking at the internet for any fan, critic, studio mention, any mention. So in a way, there it's a high tech level of watching buzz. But it's anything, anything in the internet is so pervasive. And they do it country by country. So Picard in the US, and, and these are normally there are weekly and weekly updates into monthly trend lines and all that. Again, no top 10 this week across the board, but um, there's a TV Geek is another site that uses parrots. This might be what they may have monetized some of their output. And that may be why they're selling it to be cutting edge new at TV Geek and then not having the newest on their own site. Could be. But there is the newest on their site. And the demand line for Picard, it's up to 25.3 times the uh, of an average show, the average demand expression, the demand of a show, what they call. Um, they're also talking here about average demand and peak demand. So it's... And they're giving you ratings. But the basically, the trend line from week to week... Uh, it's at number 44 this week, but last week it was at number, hello there. Oh, this is my photo. It's zoomed up. Anyway, it's up 31% in demand in the last week. And again, we're not watching episodes. We're talking about what people are saying on the internet, what's out there. And of course it's all crashing <laughs> upward. It's spiraling upward. It's cascading. It's uh, crescendoing. So the average is 25.3. The peak is up to um what do we get to here at the peak uh the peak is uh go away 31 times the average so it's it's getting up there so by the time we get to premiere week in a couple of weeks it's going to be interesting to see if it does penetrate the top tens in the u.s and the u.s is the strongest market um that's interesting here with this report um but definitely it is headed to number one like a bullet we'll see if it gets to number one but definitely the trend line is, uh, can you see that? There's your, boom. That's, yeah, that's it. Uh, show, not tell. <laughs> that's about all I have on the parrots I was going to dive into. But um, it's definitely what I think we're seeing is the whole world is falling in love. Now, here's the shocker, since you're hanging on with me for the chats. I got my screeners Friday. I have not yet watched them. I haven't yet. But what I do want to say is um, I've got some more news, and I should have said, I should have said this uh, earlier. Uh, one more piece of news. Uh, mark the time code. One more piece of news I want to get in before we leave today is uh, Virtual TrekCon. I think I've talked about that coming up, right? Um, where are we here? Uh, boom, boom. Yeah. I'm thrilled to, so on top of other things, I'm going to be co-hosting as we did last year for the first virtual trek or the third one, the first Lappy Awards, the Live Long and Prosper Awards. I hope you got a chance to, this is all for fun. This is all the gang at 7th Rule producing Virtual Trek Con. And as part of that for the second year, the Lappy Awards, which are serious Star Trek awards and some really fun ones and some really imaginative ones, some goofy ones. You had a chance to vote. Sorry, the voting's closed only all through last month they are going to be announced with a lot of the winners including yeah, a lot of regular cast people uh it's a huge production it's become on sunday of virtual trek con and virtual trek con is running thursday through monday this year now that's that's the president's day weekend it's also overlapping uh the the doctor who con here in la gallifrey gallifrey one um come on calendar where are we show up here i can't get my calendar to come up to the top where are you look <laughs> it is the 16th 17th 18th 19th and 20th thursday the 16th of february through the 20th it'll be virtual it'll be kind of in one site but there'll be some that are on uh, farmed out to different sites it's all going to be announced soon but what i can tell you right now is i'm going to be hosting the wrap-up show the post show for the awards, Sunday night, late Sunday night, especially for folks back east and around over the pond. But also on Friday, are you all ready for this? We haven't even put this on the page yet. Guess who's 
guess who's getting back together? Finally. Yes. For a special 90-minute segment at 11.30 a.m. Pacific on Friday. I'm so thrilled to announce that. We're back. <laughs> I promised, I threatened we would finally do a special. Dr. Ali and Dr. Trek, one of us is a real doctor, uh, are going to have a special edition, reunion edition of Life Support Live virtually at 11.30 Pacific, 2.30 Eastern, 6.30 UK, 7.30 Central Europe. Um, this is the day after the Picard premiere. So guess who never got to talk about second season Picard or whatever? And of course, Life Support Live began with a pitch to WonderCon about Picard and trauma. Life Support Live, you don't know, is a mashup of mental health and Star Trek, all in fun. Sometimes you come away with a little bit of something for your real life, but it's mainly just geeking out. Um, we did this two hour podcast live for two years of the pandemic at 10 a.m. Pacific Saturday mornings, <laughs> 1 p.m. Eastern, et cetera, et cetera. And um, uh, we went, yeah, nearly two years. So um, we promised at the time we would have some live specials, some virtual specials. Well, there it sits. So I hope you all can join us with that. Now, it's not Saturday. It's a Friday. So I know we won't have quite the, unex the, the expandable audience that we did on a Saturday. We're fitting into virtual Trek cons. That was the best fit for us. But it's still midday, and we can still get everybody uh, beyond the shores at that time. So anyway, wanted to throw that into this very busy day of news as well. So that's coming up. Now... I'm going to jump into the chat. Uh, so I'm so glad. And we will, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mona. There we go. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And thanks, everybody, for your, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, I'm not going to have guests every week. It's hard enough getting guests for Portal and getting the guests for Trek Files. But now... When I have authors, if I have some notable folks, all right, sure. Oh, we'll even take those actors and directors and writers. But a bigger swath of folks who may not be past veterans behind the scenes, strictly the way Portal 47's guest list is. And Trek Files are people who are Trek professionals, veterans in the industry, um, that have something that we can correlate with something, uh, a document from Gene's Files. This week it was illustration boards, storyboards. But I'll have a bigger latitude here on Trekland Tuesdays Live so we can have some of the authors, some of the folks who are involved in the licensing and licensees, um, and some just, you know, fun uh, Trek adjacent folks who are, are still are Trek related. Um, and there you go. Somebody has something, a huge event or something notable coming up. And It'll just be as it happens. So we're not worrying about a guest every week. I still have things I want to say sometimes that take 20 or 30 minutes to say. But um, that's the plan moving forward. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Melanie, you're so sweet. I have saw some, some different folks talking about this for you all. So I am so, whatever we can do to really, and life support was the same thing. Uh, thank you so much. And Tobias, I know I saw your post about having a rough day. If we can do a little something to help that along for you and anybody else, that's awesome. And thank you to Melanie here. It's just because it's a new year doesn't mean it's always so bright and shiny for everybody. Hopefully we have, there's lights at the end of the tunnel for everyone. And uh, yeah, yeah. Lots of love for Elisa here. I'm passing back through. So she'll know, she'll know that. And yeah, she is amazing. She is amazing. Um, uh, oh my gosh, Jesse. Hey, even you haven't done luck. Well, you know, in the early days, like the 20 early 2010s, I remember thinking, uh, I wouldn't do a podcast unless I could bring something new to it, like camera. And in the beginning, Trek on Tuesdays Live was just a comment from me, and I thought I'll be live and talk to people live. And it's you know, it's grown to what it is, but I always wanted to have a formal interview show. and we talked about that for a time with Roddenberry, but then the Trek files came up first and then everything has evolved the way it is. And I still, still would like to be able to do that. 
I'm, I have a Rolodex. I'm just using it for Trek files and for Portal 47. And of course, Portal 47 is my business service. So that's, you know, feeding us and keeping a roof over our heads. One of the threads. But so much Eliza love here. Eliza love. It's like the time I said Metalis instead of Metalis. Ah, <laughs> very good, Rose. Uh, may she eat, live, log, and party. There you go. Um, and Christian, you are very welcome. And and gang, don't don't get spoiled. I'm not talking about having that. We did that free. We <clears throat> I tested the guest system, but I don't know if you could, as you could tell, uh, I was winging it there. There was no way to really have a tech with the guests today. It was just kind of hope that this restream after a year or so had simplified and got the bugs worked out of it. Uh, yeah, Periscope was going live, was an app that you went live in connection with Twitter in 2017. It was the hot thing in 2016, 2017. <clears throat> uh, but thank you, Christian. I thought so too. And who who better to start off with? Was anybody, does anybody remember when we offered a workshop for anybody in fandom who wanted to, well, anybody, but anybody in fandom who wanted to up their Instagram game? It was 2019. We were leading into the summer con, I think it was June, and, and Alex and I partnered in the business circle world of things. We partnered with a, she put together a, a like a three-part workshop for a fee, but we did a free hour talk about it, and she gave some basic that anybody could do because I knew in fandom, I knew the cosplay community was especially big on Instagram. And I knew that the sci-fi world beyond that was slow to pick up on Instagram. It's starting to go there and more people are figuring out the model builders, much less the CG model builders are, are starting to drift over, but just beyond, you know, actors and just beyond writers and creators who are using it to drop their socials. And I tell you, I tell you, the likes of Dave Blass and Terry Metalis are dropping things. And the fact the studio is loosening up on that. They're not, it's not 1986 and the attorneys with film clips on, on fanboys websites repeated again. It was for a year or so, but it's, it's the cutting edge of the spear of what's virtual and social and promotional. The perceived value is finally caught up with the attorneys and uh, everybody who's antsy about spoilers. So uh, thank you again for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, there you go. I'm behind the curve here. Christoph's already got you answered. Attempt. <clears throat> That's very true. Yep, 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 yep. Um, oh, here we go. I was wondering when we'd get to everybody's gaming memories. So Michael, game you, you ran started with the reef. I told you my gaming story last week, right? Uh, in the early burly days and we came up with our own system and I did a scenario and no one would let me, no one would let me play. I had to be the DM. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, the true spirit of Star Trek when you meet everything is not. Although if you saw the trailer, I almost, I may still do a second opinion about the trailer, but the trailer, there is a bit of a sneer there from the younger captain saying, yeah, we don't blow things up every week. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Hey, Rose, when will the Portal 47 interview with Ira Bear be posted? Have I got a timeline? No, I don't have a timeline. I'm trying to get to it. This year started off with a burst of activity. I'm way overdue to post it. We're going to get on it. I promise you. Because that was an open house. So the video of Ira will be up for everybody. And since we went over an hour and a half with him, and it was unexplored corners of his career, but also of the next gen years, especially because you hear about DS9 all the time, uh, before and after. We'll get, we're working on it, Rose. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> thank you, Jesse, and glad to see you here. Uh, yes, an exciting night tonight for Portal 47. Thank you, Kyle. Um, I've never, I've never done just to sit back and let the audience handle it. So I hope everybody is up with their, all our portales tonight are up with their questions for Mike. I mean, I have some too. Uh, but it really threw me when I stopped to realize that even in, by 2018, Mike was in the generation that didn't have, like, he didn't need a webcam. You didn't need that if you weren't having business meetings kind of already. It's just amazing 
the silver linings of the pandemic. And I say that very dicely, but there were, it's like everything, every war, every depression, some things come out of it. And the shift, there's a huge paradigm shift. And for the most part, we think of the negatives because war, depression, you can, that's why I love the space program. Even though somebody pointed out to me that it was kind of a cold war uh, relic weaponizing of space. It wasn't overtly weaponizing. <laughs> it was like getting the basic technology out there. And there were so many spinoffs from the space and nobody knew how to talk about it for 10 years. The seventies was all about spending money on earth instead of up in space. Well, we were spending money on earth. Nobody got it then how much the GPS and how much microwave ovens and how much cell phones were going to revolutionize society. Uh, of course, bring up their own problems too, but, um, Oh, Melanie. See, this is why I should have Gary. We need to, I told him we're not, um, we were not done with him, <laughs> but these are interesting questions and we're all on the hunt for the next Star Trek, the experience, something that even the studio isn't sure what's going to, what's going to shake out. What's this new model of series going to do? What are the legacy shows over time going to stand with anything coming out now? And what's going to, you're not going to have five even I want to see all star. I don't want to see any Star Trek fail. That's what I've said since 2017. And the people that screech about, I'm going to boycott this show and what? Okay, fine. Don't watch it, but don't. I know. I know. I'm glad I had a red alert on that. Um, it's like any, anything that sinks is not good for the franchise overall. That's like taking a hit. It's like finding of, okay, so you found a vulnerable spot in the armor. But it's your armor, not the enemy's. Don't, don't, don't sacrifice yourself on the altar of purity. Take it in house and work with it, and then learn from it and go. But if any one series had been shot, had blown up, that would have tanked. You no, know, early on, especially, especially Discovery. As many as problematic as its birth was, you did not wish it to just go away because then nothing. The people with the money and the people with the suits would say, oh, well, Star Trek's not ready to have a comeback yet. I don't know why this is so difficult <laughs> for people to get. There's no guarantee you're going to get some kind of Star Trek because we went 12 years. Well, we had we had the Kelvin movies. That wasn't weekly adventures on a small screen in the Prime Universe. Sorry. Okay, moving on. <laughs> but that's the issue here is what do you put in a the next generation amusement park Star Trek experience? Uh, but it's still fun to remind all the Star Wars people that we had this 20 years ago, as usual. Mm. Oh, boy, Nathaniel, just going right to this. The the debate about what Doug Drexler got into. That could have been my... I, if it's still a prescient issue, I may that may be next week's topic. Um, Doug Drexler touched on some things, and I reprinted it. I brought him over to... Uh, Trekland. If you weren't already on Doug Drexler's socials, why not? Especially his Facebook. Uh, but he got back the old the old saga about the window, actual window for your view screen versus a computer imaging system. And uh, I have my opinion with this, and I was right with him. And I, I get what's going on, but I still know the original idea. The whole point was in the 60s, Gene was trying to show that that was not just a window. That it was this high-tech device, and that's a, that's an example, without screaming in your face, hitting it on the nose, it's an example of how high-tech their technology was. Now, since the 60s, we've taken a big bite out of that. It must be 300 years in the future. We have imaging. We have a holographic, you know. They even tried to redo for um, insurrection. No, first contact. First contact was the front wall of the bridge was just carpet on the E. When we first saw it. And then you imaged in with a holographic projector, but you could turn it on and off. Why waste all the batteries, right? Anyway, a big debate about the window versus imaging view system. And here's another one. Nathaniel says, why would you give your enemy the ability to see where key crew and passengers are? Well, I think they're going to have enough intelligence. Tough my head. They're going to have intelligence to know that that's for that Federation ship's if it's if it's a major fight now if it's a rando pirate or something but even then they're going to they're going to have access to know the basic layout of federation ships and know that yeah the bridge is on top and that's probably at the command center and all that and 
when you're talking about basically a room, does it really matter who's who's what unless you're specifically tracking people? And that's the top of my head. But you know, it's thank you, Nathaniel, because it's an example of um, these fan debates going on. I'm expecting, you know, in next season's lower decks, uh, Mariner is going to go on a rant somewhere, or maybe even Boehm's and go on a rant and talk about the latest fan debate <laughs> in real time in canon. Uh, the way we did at the career fair this last year. I uh, gotta say, the holodeck is still better than an amusement park. Okie dokie. Uh, still a lot of love here for Elisa. Uh, yes, Doralta, people have been excited about this since they showed the teaser. Was it Star Trek Day? or, or uh, Star Trek Day, or either Star Trek Day or San Diego Comic-Con, but I think it was Star Trek Day, and people melted down, Moriarty and lore. And people were way more excited about that than the latest, the latest villain of the week, even if she was female, apparently. But even if uh, they uh, were the daughter <laughs> of Christopher Plummer. Uh, very. Uh, what are we saying here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oops. He's only in one episode. Uh, and we're... Yeah, there we go. We're sorting all that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything to say, Nathaniel, about the merger of Paramount Plus and Showtime? I wondered the same thing. This has been the last couple of days. <clears throat> this is, again... Everything's settling out from the big remerger. Now, Showtime's been around. It was Showtime and HBO in the 70s. Showtime was always like second banana to HBO, but it was out there. They were competing with it. Paramount owned it. And um, in the remerger now, the streaming revolution, it's been like original premium model for HBO. You take HBO on the side. Well, you know, HBO Max has been kind of the streaming adaptation of HBO. Showtime had some kind of a streamer adaptation too, without just having the Showtime channel. If you're still linearly watching, uh, but this merger, the, it is, it has been increasingly kind of clunky. They're doing it. All we care about is how does it affect Trek, really? How does it affect the series? How does it affect the personnel? And then not just the productions, but <clears throat> licensing and promotion and all of that. And what are they doing? And who's the lawyers in charge now? And apparently what I've been able to tell, and this is not authoritatively, but just reading the lines, it feels like all the angst of the change as far as the human beings involved is falling on Showtime, not so much Paramount Plus. Because it's more like Paramount Plus is now the existing dominant streamer and Showtime is a thing that's going to evolve in the same way that <clears throat> HBO has been evolving as both the subscription, the direct subscription old model and what it looks like as a streaming app, the HBO Max. So that's still, I'd love to get somebody within the business side of the of the studio now, Paramount Global, to talk about what this means. And especially, all we care about is how, what it means for Star Trek. I think the series are safe. I think, I think Paramount Plus is looking at all their new franchises coming along. They're not just Trek dependent. And I think that's good, even if it means that they're not so, on one hand, they're not so slavishly dependent on the way UPN was on Voyager. They're not so dependent on Star Trek that it's made them flip about it. And they're just going to lean on the Taylor franchise now or whatever, or the, the uh, Fireflies, not Fireflies, um, that show, the show that Rekha was in. Um, Firebugs, fire. Anyway, um, somebody will tell me. Are they gonna? Is the studio now gonna have enough franchise hits, nascent infant franchises, that they're not so dependent? Does that make the number, the last, you know, the runt of the litter of whatever the Star Trek shows turns out to be? Does that make them vulnerable, or does that take the micro focus? You guys have to be perfect because we're depending on you. Now, does that take the stress off making treks? That's a dynamic I'm curious about, but that occurred to me is having other franchises and they're using the word franchise for their first show 
the first hit, the second hit. Does having other franchises mean that the, there's more pressure on Trek or there's less pressure? That's interesting. But I think for right now, as far as the numbers, I think uh, Showtime is the thing that's been most effective. That's my very... I am not writing the business column for Variety in Hollywood Reporter, much less Forbes. So that's my first take. But thanks, Fryce. That's a good question. I've been debating when we can actually have enough to really talk about this. <clears throat> Hi, analysis of sci-fi. This is interesting. I feel like I've graduated to Dear Abby or something here, or Teen Vogue. How do you connect with a Star Trek fan of a different generation? I work with a fan that's in his 60s, and he keeps quizzing me on the episode he watched the night before. You mean he's older than you, and he's watching one of the new series on his streamer in his own time, in his own way? So uh, is there follow-up on this analysis? Uh, I would say just talk Trek with them, but I'm not sure what you're saying. I need, I need more information. Uh, there you go, Dave. I knew somebody would do this, throw in the lappies. Boom. There you go. There is a screen. Although, um, Ali and my, our life support live reunion special for virtual TrekCon is going to be on our own channels at least. So where you're watching me right now, that's where you can see this, uh, our panel. I also have another panel coming for virtual TrekCon and we're going to be part of a special vendors room, uh, situation. Uh, yes, Michael, where have you been for 30 years? I'm trying to remember if he was Moriarty before he was the nanny. When it was the nanny late 80s, I didn't watch. I just kind of endured it screeching by. Oops. I don't do criticism. No, I don't. Uh, oh, well, Donnie, if you're new to virtual conventions, they got started in the pandemic. My friend Neil did one called Lockdown Con for two years that I was part of. All on his own. All on his own. No no big support structure. He about went crazy. But it was great. Um, I think the panel I was on, I didn't do anything solo, but I think one panel we were, it was a Trek panel. I think Andre and uh, David Mack and some other folks were on. So it was, it was great. And of course you can find, it's like Aliza said, it's all still up there. You can go find it. It's going to be amazing. We won't need documentaries. We'll all just go Google things for ourselves eventually. Um, and this is true also. Yay, yay, yay. Uh, hey, May, thank you. Yay, Lappy Awards. I mean, I'm not connect. I just voted, and then I'm helping with the rap show. So don't ask me. But it was amazing. Uh, no way. Was that LS? Oh, here's some LSL love. Yay. 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 I told you, Linda, I told you we would be back. Yes. Now we did a special. We would always do our regular Saturday morning show would be part of VTC. So this year they said, well, is v do you want, I mean, uh, yeah. Do you want life support to be part of VTC again? I'm like, ah, I have to see if we can do a special. And it took a while. Yes. VTC surprise survivors panel with Larry. Yeah. Um, what now? You jumped into an alternate universe where that's the only difference. Uh, okay, you'll have to help out. Blow your mind. Oh, uh, thank you, Linda. LSL. We need Beckett to to uh to lead the cheer. Well, this is what I've been saying. Donnie, in fact, I had a conversation about raising the bar too high for Picard because inevitably someone's still going to be disappointed. But, um, and maybe this is my Tuesday before Picard, uh, but um, I think it's, I think it is going to, I can't believe the round of people excited for it and, and people who were prior critics. Um, if you're still watching <laughs> Rob Burnett, He's in love with it. Uh, and I know Terry just staked his whole life and heart and career on it. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, so am I. Uh, and uh, thank you, JR. I appreciate that. We, we, we didn't have a huge audience, but I, I got to know a lot more people than earlier prior. And I was very proud of what we did with Life Support Live. 
as I've said many times before. We got to talk about, I got to finally talk about something more than the cuff braid being a half inch off the bottom of the braid at the cuff. We did some real world things for real world, real world people. And, uh, and Ali was great to work with and it still is. And if you're not watching his new round of uh, YouTube things, he's re -cha he's changed his, um, what did I do this? Ali, by the way, his, you can still find him. But his channel is no longer the Psych Show. His channel on YouTube now is just Dr. Ali, which is great. Makes sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> Got to say, you would love to see Charles Shaughnessy and Fran Drescher in Trek. Okay. Um, you know, I'm sure. But they would play totally different characters. You know. You know they would do that. Um, oh. Well, sure, Christian. Um, we did it just for you. <laughs> but happy birthday. Um, you're very welcome. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Christian. I mean, Christoph, a not scrolling back needle. Uh, so thank you. <clears throat> oh, Dave, you guys are too kind. Life Support Live was much needed. The best weekend activity for self-healing. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. You know, they're all still, as Elisa said, they're all still up there. Uh, draw the curtains. Opaque the glass. <clears throat> uh, oh, Donnie, you're too kind, man. You guys. Uh, yeah, I thought so, too. I thought so, too. <clears throat> the Admiral who was getting younger in the episode. Yeah, first season. And what is this? Fra hey, Frank. Funny how chat time changed your perspective. You're rewatching Star Trek, the motion picture of the day. I had memories of it being this grandiose production. In retrospect, it was poorly written, poorly acted, and dragged on way too long. Uh, thank goodness they did get better after that. Yeah, but have you seen the 4K, the second remastering? It, there, there's a lot of my criticisms. The final scene, <clears throat> the V'ger bowl, the V'ger temple scene, it makes so much more sense. It really feels like just the color grading, something as innocuous as not having it be just gray blobs. The uniforms actually look pretty. They don't look like gray pajamas. It's amazing. Ah. Uh, um, so anyway, explain to me what you meant exactly. <clears throat> Oh, the original, you want the original Enterprise Hotel to be built downtown? That would just, I just think about what what the world, if Frank Jaffe hadn't, <clears throat> at the very end, the very high end guy of Paramount nixed it after all the layers of bureaucracy had got it to him. <clears throat> it would have been like if all the, excuse me, gang, <clears throat> if all the planning for D Day had gone all the way up the ladder and at the last second FDR or Churchill nixed it. It's like, what? That's, that's, I mean, not, not quite the same, but that's, I just can't, I just know how bureaucratic, because we're sitting here watching something try to get off the ground now. Just all the people that want something to happen, getting everybody to be able to agree. And sometimes it's not about fighting. Sometimes it's like people have no idea what to go or you're inventing something as you go along. You'll hear Gary talk about the things they invented as they went along back in 1994 and 5 and 6 and 7. Um, well, this is good. You don't judge the people that dislike things. Just let it go. You want them to let things go. Just let go of you. As long as, you know, somebody's not in your space about it or whatever. Um... Yes, I've said this sometimes, even people who are sincerely passionate about something, sometimes if they get, if they sense fear, I've talked about this before, we talked about a lives of our life, but even in a mainstream way, sometimes the people who are angry and snappy and shitty and bitchy about something, and, you, and you're thinking, God, this is Star Trek, it's supposed to be fun, or God, this is our quilt guild, or God, this is stamp collecting, or God, this is gaming our game. The people that get really upset are the people who are lashing like an animal. And I'm not saying that they're animalistic, but I'm saying it gets primal. The thing you love the most is the thing when you feel it's threatened, you can get the most upset about. 
you know, at some point, maybe you go there <laughs> right out of the gate and maybe you run through your rational, your rational bag of tricks to talk about it or defend it. And then it finally gets down to the quick. And sometimes those folks, unless again, they're not bots and trolls and getting paid. Sometimes they're just totally acting out of a, well, this suddenly turned into life support live and I'm, and I'm doing Ali's bit. Um, but you know what I mean? So yes, it's a good thing to keep. Sometimes it's, if you look at taking the high road with that perspective, sometimes it's a lot easier and you don't feel like you're swallowing your pride or you're walking away from a fight you should see to the finish. Sometimes that person, and sometimes it gives you a attack to use. Anytime you can bond and say, you know, I agree on a lot of this. I did not like that, but whatever. And then, of course, the bottom line is, if it, you're talking about Trek on screen, what the bottom line is, now, not what somebody did in their private life, that's out there, but, because uh, that's character and that's, somebody may need help with that's character, whatever. But otherwise, just go back to texture, not trivia. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just point, just go back to texture, not trivia. Just use that, use the mistake as a, as a, uh, as a means to come up with some new something that goes against the grain. It's not just poured out of a mold. It's new, exciting texture, which is what uh, artists do when they make a mistake. It's what writers and actors do when they make a mistake. Uh, yeah. Stay away from the windows. What about the portholes in people's quarters or are they all view screens? I think those the massive amounts of portholes and quarters are just windows. Yep, Michael, Paramount Plus with Showtime is the clunky, my word, name they came up with. Should have been Paramount Plus Showtime. I know. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, and someone was complaining that Showtime is too good a brand with a lot of longevity to just throw away and not use anymore. It's all on how they box it up. How does the flowchart look at the end of the day? Yep, yep, yep. It's like Los Angeles' KCBS2's news branding being changed to KCAL News on CBS Los Angeles. Pronounced KCAL. Well, KCAL was a separate station. That's KCBS was CBS and KCAL 9 was an independent. But now Columbia Paramount owns, owns KCAL 2. There were two independent stations in L.A., but KCAL was the independent one. Um, what's got? You never got the carpeted wall where the view screen was. Not so much because the carpet, because it just begs. Why would you even want to turn the view screen off? Well, yeah. Like, why would you waste all that real estate, that wall real estate? Well, if you notice, Scott, the um, the holographic turn it on, turn it off screen was gone by the time of insurrection. They realized it, but it was the whole, the original thing of hol holography on screen. It was the same thing with the trial on DS9, the little octagon thing on the defiant floor. It's like, okay, so they're a hologram. What's the difference between talking to a hologram and talking to a guy on a view screen? So after a couple, they just looked stupid. And then they shot and the way they shot, they didn't mat them in. They had the actor live sit there and threw a different light on them that you were supposed to. So part of it was the CG of the day, the live action versus CG, the cost and the facility, you know, the ease of doing it. Obviously it's nothing now. And all the modern shows have holograms, <laughs> discovery famously to begin with, but it had to be off to finish your question. It had to be off to show that it was not just a viewer. It's like, it had to be off to show that it wasn't always on. And that it was not a window, not even a view screen that was always on. And not a physical view screen like a plasma today, but a projection. I, yeah, it was it learned by doing. Uh, this is what I was saying. Yeah, about Frank. I'll have to hear. Uh, Duralter, I don't know about that. <laughs> Showtime. A Star Trek... Stargate NCIS, really? Okay, future NCIS. Uh, the naval, the that would be the SCIS, which has you know been an idea kicked around for ages. 
investigative or the black ops of Starfleet, which then you're saying, well, isn't that section 31? Well, maybe, maybe so. Um, where are we here? Um, well, there you go, Kristoff. Infused screen requires lots of energy, or maybe it shows commercials. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is getting back to his my question. Does the guy watch anything else? Uh, ah, a little correction there from the uh, audience. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you've seen these. Okay, cool. Very good. Very good. Um, the bigger question surrounding the view screen glass problem is how much Trek can lean on the mysteries of future tech. This is why I say we go so far and then we have to let 20 years go by. It's horrible to live through it, but we have to let real world catch up to give us something visually that looks advanced. The ends of runs, the end of the Berman era, they were running out of, you know, the, even the original Star Trek, it was already starting to get hard to, give us the modern day current contemporary audience the feeling that if well if you're going in different areas that's that's the bugaboo about the original series made in the 60s and oh it has to relate to a 2017 audience um could it lose its potency for co social comedy terry yeah well i don't think they're close to that yet and i think having a new revolving pool of fresh blood in the writers rooms has been a wonderkin and i think even the different you know the two different styles of anime 2d and 3d animation have been good for that creative process too uh yeah i still don't feel like i have enough facts to know what's going on here analysis so there we go oh galinda that's very that's very kind of you. Thank you, guys. Um, I guess that was our intention. <laughs> but good, 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 good. It was a great, a great time experiment. And like I said, we're not giving up the brand. We're going to keep it around for specials like this. Who knows? Who knows what the future will bring? Uh, you think so? You think so, Christoph? Current shows are too proud of their real production value tech and too much new fictional tech and pseudoscience for their own good. We're talking many trucks in particular. Are you scanning around? Uh, oh, there you go, Mona. The Lappies last year was your introduction to Ryan in the bunch. I'm so sorry. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, oh, thank you, Scott. You all saw this then. The Live Support Live playlist on my YouTube. And a big chunk, what, the first 50 are in podcast form with audio, and they're they're trimmed down for podcast. Uh, thank you, though, for posting that, Scott. Awesome. Um, let's see. There's definitely a season five coming for Discovery, on top of everything else you say, Melanie. And I think it will be – I think Discovery has been the show that keeps – reinventing itself and clawing back to what it could have been in the beginning. <laughs> uh, oh, in the universe that you're from, Moriarty and that butler were played by two separate people. You clearly jump universes because you know everything and you're never wrong. I see. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, word defending motion picture. There you go, Mona. I mean, Narda. Totally up for that. Slow, maybe, but well acted still. Okay. Uh, the director's edition. You're talking about the ABC version? I thought that was what they were. Yeah, I've gone fuzzy on that. Hey, Frank. Okay, one more. One more rumination. Only because you know the word rumination. Uh, I just want to know who are the roomies and how did, no, okay. um, you didn't realize the theme to Star Trek next year actually came from the credits music from the movie. 
Oh, you need to, yes, you do need to see the 4K remaster. I think it's somebody to help me. They keep yanking it around on streamers, but I I think it's left Paramount Plus, but I think it's maybe on Netflix or Amazon. I forget which one has it, at least in the U.S., which would fit you. Uh, but, oh, yes, the TNG theme is the, yes. Dennis McCarthy wrote a theme. And uh, much like Bill Blackman's costumes for generation, they decided to go with something they already had in the time they had available to, to rework it. Uh, oh, okay, cool, Mona. You're you're welcome. Uh, okay, I'll preach on. You're not going to stop me. <laughs> Whatever it was I was preaching on. Uh, let's see. I know we're running long today because we had a full hour there with guests. Um, Narda, so thank you for hanging for nailing down the outback for us out there. Um, and yes, as Christoph is saying, Disco 5's confirmed. They're working on it. <laughs> Section 31 might happen when Michelle Yeoh has enough money to buy herself her own studio next to Lot Lucio Ball style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, uh, it won't be, uh, what do we call that? Uh, it won't be Lucy Park anymore. It'll be Michelle Park. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, surely not. Surely not. Uh, yeah, it was expanded from the pilot. There was supposed to be a two-hour pilot for phase two. Um, like padded out to two. Well, you know, Greg, if they'd been able to edit, the, a lot of that feeling of slowness comes from just slapping the visual effects. They didn't trim them. And they were, you know, the Goldsmith had written his score to certain numbers. And if they started trimming too much down, it was just no time. So much, so much had to be processed and cutting the cues to match the shorter edits that should have been shorter. Some of them are a little ponderous. It's like, we spent the money on those suckers. Let's say it was, yes. And this is why, this is why the director's edition has much better pacing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm. Uh, interesting there. Global perspective. Once again, uh, SCIS is a nice idea. There you go. I wasn't even pushing for it, but it's kind of obvious. If it's Naval Criminal Investigative Service, that would be Starfleet Criminal Investigative Service. Right? Right? Um, yeah. Sci-fi used to be sci-fi. Yeah. But they couldn't, they couldn't trademark S-C-I-F-I as easily. Mm-hmm. With the future news. News of the future. 20, no, it's, that's Rowan and Martin's laughing. Sorry. Uh, I had a question. Somebody, uh, Michael, this is sure. Sure, sure. Well, I had somebody ask me, why is everything in Star Trek always classical music and opera? And maybe a little, why is everything 20th century or before? Like, did they ha not have music in the, in the 2100s, in the 21st century? In the 22nd century, in the 23rd century, what passes for pop music? Now, of course, uh, well, Riker's, <laughs> Riker and Troy's daughter, you know, has, is it fallen? Oh, it's not on display. I have her Klingon punk band t-shirt. Uh, there's that. There's Klingon goth rock. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Geralt. There we go. Um, anything else here as we wrap up? Yes, 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 yes. Ah, <laughs> very clever. Very funny. Uh, oh, what happened? How did that happen? Uh, there we go. Boom. Sorry, Jason. Uh, Cairo says, if only Michelle Yeoh had more time, she can't do everything and be everywhere all at once. <laughs> or can she? Yeah. An actual question here, Jason. Do you think there will be a fan push for your new Star Trek to experience soon? Um, maybe as we all recover from the pandemic and we all talk to each other beyond Zoom and email. I, the studios wanted one forever, but some of this had, there was very, like, again, the central question became not even about money or space, but 
what would you do it? How would you base it? The 1997 model was based on promoting DS9 and Voyager and Next Gen's the movies. And you had that next. So it made a lot of sense to keep it right there. And all the aspects. Um, and then the board were part of Voyager by then. And the second ride added was easy to easy to do so it's right now we have to decide what will that would it be like a disneyland with different lands will we have animation land <laughs> will we have gamma quadrant land and alpha you know what, what how will it be organized and whose bar will be the bar or will there be more than one bar restaurant i you know uh well thank you thank you stingray great interview with gary goddard about the experience, did you know that Movie Park Germany has a new stoop? I think I'd heard this called Federation Plaza that copies the old experience cues. I think I'd heard about this. I, I didn't work on it, obviously. Um, Data's favorite band is Kraftwerk. <laughs> okay, everybody's out of here. Everybody's out of here. Hey, gang. Uh, thank you again for joining me on such a historic day. Thank you for hanging in here long. What's it been? Yeah, here's another two hour uh, uh, since we got going. But thank you again to Alex. Thanks again to Aliza for being on today. Thank you all for being here on a historic first day. Again, that was a little bit of an overload, but um, we won't do that every week. Hopefully most of the time we'll have one guest. Uh, I guess the next thing to do is it'll be like Project Gemini, and I'll have two guests on at the same time for the same uh, reason. That can come down the pike, no pun intended. Otherwise, thanks so much for being with us today. Once again, if you are going to be in town or know someone who is someone who's going on the cruise and you don't think they know about this, today, tomorrow, this is the we're cranking down to the deadline for the special day. Boom. <laughs> yeah, February 23rd. The March 3rd is closed or March 4th, I think that's supposed to be. That is closed off. But uh, I have four seats left on the 23rd if you're in town, cruise or not. Doesn't matter. Let me know. LarryNemichek.com. And, you know, get on my newsletter, uh, LarryNemichek.com. But you can see everything going on on the calendar. Things are heating up. It's getting exciting. It's getting exciting. Once again, thanks. Shout out to all of our Patreon folks. Thank you so much for helping helping uh, lighten the burden a little bit and get it to where we can think about doing things like we've done. And if you'd like to join in, very simple, very low cost, hopefully five and 10 bucks a month. I haven't made a big deal out of my Patreon, but it's there if you want to help out slash Trekland Live at patreon.com. And you know, if you want to um, help out just more, if you, if you want to just be more part of everything Trek in our circle here at Trekland, jump into Portal 47. There you go, portal47.net. Got to give a shout out. We were just talking about Gary Goddard. If you haven't heard it yet, it's up. Um, if you haven't been hearing our most recent Trek Files back up too, we've had Terry, we've had Dave on. We're going to slide into the Picard premiere week with some more of them. Right now, the new show is Gary Goddard and the Happy 25th and some boards you never saw for a blander start experience. Up at the Trek Files, that's where the documents and the podcast are. But the audio is wherever you catch your podcasts every week. And yeah, uh, find us wherever you can on Twitter, uh, at Larry Nimichek. Right now, by the way, our T Public store, T Public is having their big 40. They they hop up twice a month, I think. Um, I think. Check it out. Uh, go to my site. You can click on the store and see. But otherwise, hey, Twitter and Mastodon, I'm at Larry Nimichek. Larry's Trekland is where you're watching now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe it. Uh, also Facebook and especially on Instagram too is a lot of fun these days. Portal47.net is the place you jump in if you want to be with us in all the ways and all the things with the Portales all year long. Phew, that's going to do it for us. I will see you back next Tuesday. Who knows what Tuesday will bring? I have already got some ideas percolating around and who knows what the week will bring. And hopefully we're done with our memorials this month, right? 
So, hey, gang, uh, thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, jump in elsewhere when you can. We're going to do some, we've got exciting things happening by the end of the month. I'll also be live, if you're at Galley, I'll be live at Gallifrey One on Saturday at the Token Trek panel at 3 o'clock. Um, we'll see you then. We'll see you one of the ways. <laughs> and if nothing else, we'll see you back here next Tuesday. Same warp time, same warp channel. Okay. Hey, everybody, please stay healthy. Do all the things. Stay woke. Don't shut yourself up. Just check the sources when you come across something new. It might really be new. It might really be something fake. <laughs> and yeah, track well, everybody. <laughs>